Hey guys, welcome back. So um, this video is going to cover uh, building the rear suspension assembly and uh, attaching up the motor. There are steps 14 through 18 in the instruction manual for the frog. So step 14 is the rear dampers. So the rear dampers are the shock absorbers. The, um, so I've got this little plastic pencil box kind of thing. Um, so these C-clamps they're tiny, they're wicked small. Um, be careful not to lose them because they don't give you any extras, which is really unfortunate. Um, so as you can see down here, there are also some extra bits. These are the um, shock piston shafts here. Um, there are some plastic bits you have to cut out. Um, I'd also recommend um, making sure that your needle nose um, are of the appropriate type. Don't use pliers. They've got too uh, jaggy of teeth. Um, I used a paper towel and um, cut it in a tiny little shape like what they show here in the pictures and then um, doubled it over so that it was extra thick because um, you really need to clamp down hard on the shaft in order to screw this bit on. But these are the parts that you need. So some of this stuff are going to be in mostly the same bag. Um, these little rubber... Um, what are the hell are they called? O-rings, right? The rubber O-rings um, and the diaphragms and all the metal bits um, are all in one bag along with the springs. These are in, I think, the D-bag. Okay? D-bag. <laughs> um, and then the the shafts were just sort of loose in the box. And then these are on... What tree is this on? The V-tree. That's a small little... There are two trees that are identical. The V-trees are identical. So um, what you do is you get the O-rings and you put them in the plunger here and then you put the, um, the V-disc in the top cap and then you uh, go ahead and screw that on. Make sure you don't cross-thread this. Um, then you get the, the piston shaft. Um, now the, the piston shaft will have two C-clamps per shaft. You put the first C-clamp on and then on the lower slot and then you'll put the um, the piston, um, I'm not sure what this thing is called. It, it's like a, a flow reducer. There's holes in it that um, allow the oil to pass through it at a, at a certain rate. And then you clip this on top. Now, in order to clip it, you need to use your needle nose and put one edge of the needle nose on the piston itself, but not on the ridge. And then you put the other needle nose tip on the C-clamp and then you squeeze. So this is actually above the C-clamp itself because if you put it down too low this will restrict the C-clamp from clipping in. And then you use your needle nose with a paper towel to act as a, a cushion. Um, I would recommend, I have show here in this picture some space um, but when I actually did it um, the edge of this um, I'm sorry the focus is down here. The stupid camera wouldn't focus where I wanted it to. Um, make sure that this edge is a butt right up against your needle nose. And use the widest part of the needle nose as you can. You don't want to use the smaller part up here. Use a wider part of the needle nose. Have this pushed right up against so that you don't have any torque action. Uh, squeeze the hell out of the needle nose and twist this piece on. Um, and then, so step 15 is filling them up with oil. So you'll do that twice. You'll have two of these like so. Um, you'll have some bits left over. Um, so here uh, is the piston that you just assembled along with the oil. Now, if you notice, it comes with the yellow oil, which is a 400 weight oil. You see it's, they color it, and that's the soft. So it's the, the most firm in the soft set. Um, and how firm of a oil you want in your pistons will be determined by uh, the weight of your vehicle, um, which will vary slightly, not a ton. Um, I would say the weight of your rims and wheels will probably play a factor, what the kind of RC equipment and how heavy the battery is, all that will play a role. Um, and if you're the size of the jumps you're taking. So if you're running on the street mostly, um, get new back tires if you are, because they're going to rip the hell out of those spikies. But if you're running basically on smooth surfaces and you don't need firm suspension, you know, this is probably fine. Um, you might even go down to the orange. I can't imagine you'd ever go down to the red. That would be super, super soft. Um, maybe just for just straight pavement or something. Um, if you're taking a lot of jumps, you might go up to the green 
maybe even the blue, but I got to tell you, the yellow is still a pretty stiff suspension. Um, I would say at the most, maybe go to the green um, if you're taking a lot of big, heavy jumps. So what you'll do is you um, get some tissue. I used, uh, again, a paper towel, and I just wrapped around the, the barrel of the shock, and then I filled it up with the oil. Now, it's hard to see, but you fill the oil up until it just is taller than the ridge of the aluminum. Okay, so uh, liquids ha um, have a tendency to be able to fill up just a teeny little bit higher than the actual top of the ridge. So that's what you want to do. Don't overfill it, then you end up spilling oil all over the place and making a mess. You definitely don't want to underfill it because then you'll introduce air into your shock, which will create bubbles and cause it not to work right. So then you put the um, diaphragm on top and you want the bowl shape to be down so um, you can see that the indentation is pointing down because what this is going to do is act as a reservoir this as the oil pushes forward this will then move up so you don't want to have it the other direction you want to have the, the the bowl facing down so that you could you could put cereal in the top of this and if you've got the a right amount of oil in you'll have just a bead of oil along the edge with not a ton overspilling although overspilling is better than if you just put this down and nothing showed up that means you need to put a few more drops of oil into the thing before you button it up then you put the plastic V part on top of this and then you put the um, the cap and make sure again that you don't cross thread this because it's very easy to do nice and tight if you don't tighten this down um, you're going to end up bleeding all your oil out not only creating a mess but then making your oil dampers no longer oil dampened so once you get those two built right you have to go and get more parts for part 16 so you've got these collars all right and um, these collars are on the C tree all right, and then you've got a couple of these screws that have a, a shaft um, that's only partially threaded, and then you have your springs. And what you'll do is um, you'll take the C collar, right? This collar is the shape of a C, and you face it so that the ridge is towards the spring. So you'll drop the spring down onto the shaft, and then pull the spring down with your fingers to compress the spring up against the cylinder here and you'll drop the C collar down onto here with its ridge facing towards the spring so that the spring sits on the C collar with a little bit of ridge inside and the pressure of the spring against the C collar holds it in place. So when you go to attach it to the chassis um, what I found was the most useful was is if I put the shock in the reverse position um, and then screwed it into the chassis this direction and then I could rotate it 180 degrees into the proper position and then you take your other screw and you screw it into your rear suspension arm. Now I put a little bit of that um, ceramic grease on this part here because there is some movement in this section and again plastic on metal movement likes to be greased. And this is what it looks like when the rear damper is connected. This is the left side of the car. So as you can see, we've got the screw here that's been greased. Um, it wouldn't hurt to grease this bit up here, although there's not nearly as much movement up here, so it's probably not as crucial. Um, and that's what it should look like when you're all said and done. Step 17 is uh, attaching the pinion gear to the motor. So if you remember back in step 7, um, we had to choose what gear ratio we were going to use. Um, and that determined which spur gear we were going to select when we built our gearbox. So in my case, I went with the standard build, um, which is using a, let me see here, a 18 uh, tooth pinion gear and a 50 tooth spur gear. So this here is the 18 tooth pinion. Now you can tell it's 18 tooth because of the three pinions that came with the kit, this collar, this has two grooves etched into the collar. Um, the, the 19 tooth pinion has no teeth etched into the collar, so it's just smooth, and the 16 tooth has just one groove etched in the collar in the middle. So this is the 15 tooth pinion used in conjunction, sorry, the 18 tooth pinion used in conjunction with the 50 tooth 
spur gear. Um, and that gives me a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio, which is considered standard. Now, I'm not going to use the, the CAN 540. They call it the silver CAN um, 540 that came with the kit. So I've upgraded to a sport tune motor. Um, and the reason why I chose this is because this is the highest performance uh, brushed motor that the speed control that came with the kit is rated for. So um, I got my motor, and then there's this, um, it's like a, a spacer. They call it a motor plate. It's, a, it's like a cardboardish sort of material. Um, so you put the motor spacer on, and that acts as, uh, I guess, a, a vibration damper or a sealant between the, because you don't want to have, I guess, because the gearbox is metal, you don't want to have metal against metal, so that acts as a little buffer between. Now, you'll notice on your pinion gear there's a flat spot or on your shaft, your drive shaft of your motor, there's a flat spot. And that aligns up with what's called the grub screw. So you take your tiny little Allen wrench and you, you thread this down in just a bit. Um, and you want to look into the hole on the pinion gear to make sure that the grub screw isn't protruding into the hole. And you put this onto the drive shaft, making sure that the grub screw is aligned up with this flat spot. Then you tighten it down. Now this is the amount of space that I started off with, and as it turned out, it was far too little. I needed to push, I need to pull the pinion gear out much farther because you want the gears on your pinion and the gears on your spur gear to line up. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment in the attaching motor section. So once you get your pinion gear on, um, in oh let me back up for just one real quick second. So if you strip this out, then you're well well and good screwed. You'll need to get like a Dremel tool and. Uh, hone this out or somehow destroy your pinion gear as well as this grub screw to trying to get it off. Um, worst case you might crack this or something and then it won't stay on at all. It's just a mess. So snug it down tightly but don't over tighten it to strip it out and um, you also don't want to probably use um, thread lock on this. If it's uh, not staying tight just get a different grub screw or possibly an entire different pinion gear. Um, from what I understand, the pinions that come with the kits are aluminum, and you can buy steel pinion gears, which are apparently more durable. The steel pinions will help increase the life of your spur gears, although I'm not sure why that would matter, because um, the spur gears are nylon. Um, so why a harder metal would make for a difference, I don't know. But at any rate, um, step 18 is attaching your motor. So I've got my motor with my pinion gear on. Um, we've got our two little end pieces here, along with the bell cap. Uh, two long screws, which go through the bell cap to attach the motor, and then uh, two of these screws because we're doing one side of these first and then another step we'll need two more to attach the other side. So um, generally what I'll do is I'll put the two screws in and put the bell cap on. Um, you can see the screws protruding here and then you'll line those up with the screw holes and put it in. However, um, the very first time you do this you need to make sure that your pinion gear is uh, the right distance out. And the way that you do that is you just put take the bell cap off and the screws out right. So you don't do that first. You put the motor up against and you push it flat. And you see how the pinion is aligning with the spur. And what you want is something like this. And I tried to brush the grease off as best as I could with a Q-tip, but it's, hopefully it doesn't obscure the fact that the edge of the pinion and the edge of the spur are flush with each other. There's no extra pinion sticking out beyond the edge of the spur gear, and there's no spur gear showing beyond the edge of this. So you don't want a step action in either direction. You want it as close to smooth as possible. So in my case, the amount of space that I showed you a few slides ago was not nearly enough. I only had about half the teeth engaging of the pinion with the spur gear, so I had to go back, pull the, mo pull the motor out, uh, loosen the grub screw, slide the pinion out farther, tighten it back down, and then retry it. It took me two or three tries to get it to where it was exactly smooth. But you want to do that because you want to have the full width of the pinion gear meshing with the full width of the spur gear. Once you get that uh, distance correct and you get the grub screw tightened down, you can go ahead and put the bell cap on, put the two screws in, tighten up your motor, and this is what she'll look like when it's all said and done. Um, then you can see that this um, bracket over here is then screwed on with the two screws. Now, what I found with the 540 motor installed is this arm is very close to this motor. I mean, they're nearly touching. Um, now, when it moves forward, there's a little bit, there's more space, but um, this motor gets hot, and this is plastic, so it's going to be interesting to see that over the course of running this, if uh, this 
suspension arm gets any sort of heat wear or damage from the motor being in such close proximity. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, the next section, we'll go ahead and try to configure up this electronic speed control that came with my kit. Um, from what I've read, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, the TBLE-02S is the model number of this electronic speed control. And um, the tricky bit with it is it will work with either a brushless censored Tamiya motor of very specific models, or it will work with brushed 540, which is what comes in the kit as a brushed 540, even if you don't get the upgraded Sport Tune Jobber, which is the fastest motor that this speed control is rated for. However, this thing comes configured to run with the brushless motor, but the brushless motor doesn't come with the kit. It seems pretty stupid in Tamiya's part to configure this to run brushless but they ship a brushed motor. So I think new people, this is going to be probably one of the worst PR decisions to me has made. Um, they should have configured this from the factory to run with a brushed motor because that's what it ships with. So there is configuration that's required and we're going to go over that um, in the next video and hopefully I'll be able to get that sorted out and not look like an idiot on YouTube.